Hello and today I'm going to be showing you how to work with textures inside of Watch Dogs 1. This also works for Watch Dogs 2, Far Cry 2, Far Cry 3, Far Cry 4, Far Cry 5 and pretty much all modern Ubisoft games because they all use the same sort of format and archives and things like that because they're all built in the same game engine and you know if it's not broken why fix it. So uh, this actually comes in really handy. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to convert files from XBT format, which is a uh, Watch Dogs in-game texture format, or texture container I should say, but I'll get into that, um, to T uh, DDS format, which you can edit in most photo editing software. Uh, I personally use Paint.net, but you can also use GIMP, or you can use Photoshop if you have a plugin, and you know, there's lots of software you can work with DDS. Anyways, um, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is that I show you how to do this because you'll find that if you're watching this video, the likelihood is you've been going through forums trying to figure out how to work with the texture containers because there's lots of tools that can convert from XBD. I've made this video a million times already and I still can't get it right. <laughs> right, to convert from XBT to DDS. Yeah, XBT, I'll get there in a minute, bear with me. There are lots of tools that can convert from XBT format to DDS, but can't convert back, and I don't know why, there's just like an unavailability of those tools. Um, there are tools that can do it, but there's not many, or the links are dead, or they just don't work. Um, but yeah, for this tutorial, you're going to need some bits of software. You're going to need a piece of software called Disrupt. You're going to need a piece of software called XBT2DDS. Finally got it. Um, you're also going to need a piece of software called HXD. That's my preference. It's a hex editor. You can use any hex editor, but that's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial. Um, you're also going to need to install the Microsoft XNA framework, um, which is a small download, and I'll also provide a link to that description in the description, like all the other ones as well. Um, you will need that for disrupt, otherwise you'll just run into constant errors. So <sighs> now we've got that out of the way. <laughs> now, you know, like I said, for this video, I'm using Watch Dogs as a base game to work on this. Um, and in Watch Dogs, and I believe Watch Dogs 2 as well, potentially even other Ubisoft titles, I can't vouch because I've not tried working with them yet. But um, you'll notice that when you navigate to the folder and then navigate to the other folder that contains all of the data for the game, you'll stumble across a folder called patch.dat and patch.fat. Now these, this well, this is an archive, the .dat, and that's more of an information file that doesn't really do a whole lot, but we're going to be using both of them. Um, the patch.dat is essentially an update file. The game will always load files from there first. So if you take a game, uh, a file out of the game, out of its normal data files, um, and you put it into this patch.dat instead, it will read the one from the patch.dat and ignore the one in the game. Does that make sense? So you can modify any file you want. Think of it as like making your own update for the game. You know, it will always read the, the latest version of the file. Um, so I'm going to show you what to do. Now, I advise you make a folder called mods, but I've already done that. So for the sake of this tutorial, I've made one called YouTube. You want to take your patch.dat and patch.fat files, you want to select them both, and you want to move them into your YouTube folder, or your mods folder. Um, and then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to extract them, and that's where disrupt comes in. You want to take your patch.dat and you want to drag it onto the file that is called gibd.disrupt.unpack.exe. Now, that's pretty much self-explanatory. It's going to unpack the archive. And what we'll be doing later is using the .pack.exe, um, which will then repack it into an archive. So you'll find that when you drop this on there, it will create a new folder in the directory the file originates from. So I've now got a folder called patch underscore unpack. And you want to go into that. And your files in here might vary. Yours are probably going to have standard unmodified game files in here. My folders are a little bit different because um, I, I've played with mine a bit. Um, and like I said, I'm going to be working with textures, and I've already set up the archives, uh, sorry, the folders to um, to where my textures are stored. So in this file, you need to have a folder tree that matches exactly what it does in the game itself, so it knows where to read the file from. So um, I got my textures from the game's windy underscore city dot dat 
um, archive which contains most of the game's files um, and one of the first folders in there is called graphics um, so I had to make one in here and then I had to follow the same tree for the folders that I'm using um, so I modified vehicle textures so I had to make another folder then I had to make another one then I had to make another one um, so I'm, I'm actually going to be working with these two fi uh, files by here so I'm going to delete these so I can make them again and show you how I did it um, so, so yeah we need to get started on the, the 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 complex bit the extracting is the easy bit but now we're working on the uh, slightly harder bit it's still not complicated by any means but if you're new to this you might struggle a bit but that's why i'm here to guide you through that's why this video exists so <laughs> um yeah you need to go back to the games folder and you need to get the files you need from the game so you can go to whatever archive you want and get whatever files you need and extract them to wherever you want um, I advise putting them in your mods folder. Um, so I... Did I do it yet? Did I extract them? No, I didn't. So I'm going to go to my mods folder because I've extracted the game's main archive here. And I'm going to go to the folder I was talking about. It was under graphics, textures, and then it was... Where was it? I've lost it. I've lost it. I've lost it. Was it under textures? No, sorry, it was under vehicles underscore nexus. And then it was under land. And then it was underscore textures. That was it. Okay, so I'm going to be working with this file that is called Global Lights. Now you've got a standard version and a higher quality larger image version. The lower quality one is the one that loads in when you're at distance. Um, and then the higher quality one doesn't show until the absolute last minute when you're up close to the vehicle. So you, you've got higher quality textures. And that basically just helps the game run more efficiently so it's not loading high quality text from a distance and eating all of your video memory. Um, now you want the files end in underscore D because that's the detail file, that's the standard texture. Um, I believe the E stands for emissive which is like when it emits light. Um, I believe the M is the spectacular map, so like when light hits it, it's, it has a bit of a, a shine, a reflection almost. And then N is the um, normal map or bump map that gives it a sort of 3D look, so it doesn't look like a flat picture plastered onto a wall. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to be working with the basic texture, which is uh, global lights underscore D and global lights underscore D underscore high. Now you want to copy those and you want to put those into your mods folder like I said mind YouTube for the sake of this tutorial uh, and you want to paste them in there just so you can keep a backup and you want to copy them from there and you want to go to your xbt2dds um, folder and you want to paste them straight in its root directory and then what you want to do is you want to double click convert all.bat it will uh, create a folder called output textures and you will now see that your images are in a readable and editable DDS format. So we've got half the job done. Now you want to go to your texture and you want to edit it in whatever way you like. For the sake of this video, however, I don't know why I did that because I just pressed Control A. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I just want to make it quick and snappy. I'm just going to change the color. There we go. <laughs> and then I'm going to file, save as. And then you want to make a new folder. You don't want to overwrite your original textures in case you need them back. Um, in case something doesn't work or you need a backup. Uh, so I'm just going to create a folder called New. And then I'm going to save my new file into there. And also for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using the same file twice. I'm not going to be working on both the low and high quality one. I'm just going to overwrite the low quality one with the high quality one. Because I've got a high-end PC anyway, so I don't actually need to worry too much about the... Um, the lower quality textures loading in. Um, you want to open your... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Actually, I'll do it from the folder because it's quicker and you can see how it works. I want to open the lower quality one as well. As you can see, same texture, just smaller. Um, and then you want to make the same adjustments to it. But I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do is... I'm actually going to take the easier route. I'm going to copy it from there and just dump it straight into the new file. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to go back to my larger image file, save as, and then I'm going to overwrite it. So now I've got two large images with <laughs> two different names, but it's your choice. You can edit them individually, or you can just go with two large images. 
If you have a low-end PC, you could even go with two small images. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, so this contains all of the well, the textures for the vehicle lights and the vehicle badges and the license plate and all that stuff. Um, and I'll show you this in-game once it's done as well so you can see how it came out. Um, so now that we've extracted our files to DDS format, edited them, saved them as new DDS files. One second, motorbike outside. Thanks, buddy. Um, you can close this window and we want to go to our hex editor. You want to go to File, Open, and then you want to go back to the XBD, XBT2 DDS, and then you want to um, open your file. You need to do this for both files, and I'll show you why in a second. Basically, this section before DDS is the, the header for the container for the file. Because um, if I open the same file, but in its new DDS format, which one did I open? Hi. You'll notice it just starts with DDS, and that's why the game won't read it, because it doesn't have a header, and the game doesn't understand the file. Does that make sense? Also, it's worth taking note of this. DXT5. That basically means when you're in your photo editing software and you save the file, you need to make sure you save it as DXT5, otherwise it won't work in-game. And speaking of, I didn't check that, so I should probably do that quickly. Where's it gone? There. I want to open my file. Just make sure it's saved as DXT5. I'll replace it. It is. That's all right then. I don't need to do that. Okay. Um, now you want to. Uh, where were we? Hex editor. That was it. All you need to do is you want to go to your original file. You just need to select everything up until the point where it says DDS. You want to copy that. And then you need to go to your... Um, <laughs> sorry, I had a bit of a blank then. Um, yeah, you want to go to your DDS file and you want to paste the header in that was in the original XBT file. So that's all I've done. Look, see they now match. That's all you need to do. Then you need to go to File, on the DDS one, Save As, and you want to save it as, you want to change the extension from DDS to XBT, because that is now a container. It's changed from a DDS image to an XBT container that the game will read because of that header that's just been added in. Now the reason you need to do this twice is because you'll notice that when I open the smaller image, where is it? That one. Sorry, not that one. Need to go to the original, yeah, sorry, the smaller one there. You open that, you'll notice it has a file path that tells it where to load the higher quality texture from. So you just need to do the same thing copy that, go to the DDS, paste it, OK, file, save as, and you just want to do the same thing again. Just change it to XBT and save. Now, see, we've got the two new files here. We can ignore the DDS ones. We don't need those anymore. These are, these files are our focus. So you want to go to... Um, where is it? Right, those were our backups. So we want to go to the patch underscore unpack and then graphics. Sorry, wrong one again. Vehicles underscore nexus, land, textures, because this is where our, our modified archive is. Well, that's weird, they're all exactly the same size. Um, and yeah, you basically now added your new modified files that have been converted back to XBT format uh, to your archive. All you need to do now is repack it. So I'm going to, well, I can delete these now just to make a point. And you want to rename this folder to patch. And all you need to do is... I minimize that. Drag the patch folder onto gib.disrupt.pack.exe. Once you do that, you will get a patch.dat and a patch.fat. You want to copy those. And go back to your game folder where your data stored, and you want to paste into where the original patch.dat and patch.fat were. 
Now what the game will do is it will load those files now because they are newer um, than the, well, the newer and a higher priority than the ones in the game originally. So it will always load these ones that are inside the patch um, archive. So I'm now going to load up the game and I'm going to show you what my new textures look like while running in the game. So there you have it. As you can see, <laughs> all my weird brand new textures are now running in the game. And then we'll play to got a weird funky yellow color. And all of our tail lights are blue and our headlights are blue and the badges are green. <laughs> it actually looks kind of hilarious. I didn't edit the emissive file, so like the there's a light still going to glow red. Yep. But you can, uh, you can edit the emissive textures as well if you would like to make them glow blue. It looks pretty cool nonetheless, and that's that's pretty much all there is to it. It's uh, just changing the header in the DDS file to make it back into um, back into a container from an image. I hope this uh, video has helped you, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll leave a comment below, and I'll uh, do my best to assist you. Thanks for watching.